Hey, Pokemon Masters, Bookie Patobi here, and I am in Tokyo, or as you know it, Saffron City, behind me, Silf Co., currently being raided by one of the most evil organizations in the whole of the Pokemon world. But do not worry, for I have got the device that they were looking for, the project, the Master Ball. A Pokeball with a 100% catch rate. The man who's after this will one day become Master of the Multiverse, but uh, not if we can stop him. The Master Ball. It's debatable as to whether the regular Pokeball is an evil piece of technology, for while it is created using Infinity Energy, the life force of Pokemon, at the end of the day, a Pokemon has to really choose to join a trainer. This happens as the result of battling only against the strongest of trainers, for it is only with them that they will achieve evolution. But the Master Ball has a 100% capture rate. No other Pokeball in existence is like it, apart for, say, the Origin Ball from Pokemon Legends Arceus, and perhaps the Pal Park Ball. The Origin Ball is a special case, Perhaps it was by learning about this that Selfco learned that it was theoretically possible to create a Pokeball with a 100% catch rate. The other, the Park Ball, was likely in production as a result of working alongside Professor Oak. The Pal Park was opened by Professor Oak. Then again, perhaps the catchability of the Pokemon in the Pal Park is as a result of the fact that they're already caught. So we can't lean on this too much. It is interesting to note, though, that it is typically Pokemon professors who give the player characters the Master Ball, whether that is, of course, Professor Juniper or Elm or or even in the side series like Pokemon Gale of Darkness, where it's the Pokemon Professor who gives the Master Ball to the player character, and only to player characters who have achieved the absolute incredible. Alternatively, you can get the Master Ball through a lottery system, but your chances of that are, well, well as rare as winning the lottery. The other most consistent place that the Master Ball turns up is in the hands of the least trustworthy in society, the evil teens. The Master Ball can be found in the evil team bases for Team Aqua and Magma. Team Galactic 2 have possession of this legendary item, and it seems that they don't want to use the item to capture Dialga or Palkia. Cyrus talks about how the Master Ball would somehow weaken or restrict the Pokemon, unlike the Red Chain, which will allow him to control those Pokemon without dampening their strength. But Team Rocket doesn't mind. Team Rocket isn't looking to destroy the world necessarily, they simply want to use Pokemon as tools. Dampening the power of the most powerful Pokemon even slightly still leaves you with the most powerful Pokemon of all time, a Pokemon that they commissioned, Mewtwo. Mewtwo is the most powerful Pokemon to exist, for it is not natural, but instead it is created. It's an abomination and the most powerful Pokemon I've ever encountered. If Pokemon are tools to be used for conquest and for money, then why not have the most powerful tool in your disposal? This is the monstrosity that Giovanni created. But he didn't count for Mewtwo's free will and the want to be out of its own containment. And so he needed to go to Silphco and obtain the Master Ball to get Mewtwo back. But after the raid on Selfco, the Selfco president says that production on the Master Ball is going to stop because it can't be allowed to get into the hands of evil people. This, of course, though, is untrue. The R&D department must be up to something because it ends up in the hands of these Pokemon researchers and in the bases of these other evil team members. It seems that Selfco is particularly bad at allowing this ball to not fall into the hands of these types of criminals. But while Archie, Maxi, and Cyrus don't use their Master Balls, Giovanni only wished he had one, for there was only one Pokemon that he needed to capture, his own creation, Mewtwo. With this Master Ball, he was to travel to the Cerulean Cave, where he already had Grunts stationed outside. It was his goal to reclaim this Pokemon. This, after his plan of battling it normally and weakening it with Ghost Pokemon, fell through when he was unable to obtain the Self Scope. However, in the events of every Pokemon game that we've ever played, you, the player character, manages to stop Giovanni, stop him from getting hold of the Master Ball plans. But we do know what would happen if Giovanni succeeded. We see this at the end of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, where the Rainbow Rocket episode happens. There we meet Giovanni, now with Mewtwo on his team, trying to conquer the multiverse with the other team leaders by his side. They are all using Master Balls for their Pokemon. It seems that they were somehow convinced their minds were changed to grab Master Balls and catch the legendary Pokemon whose power they sought to use. Who convinced them? Probably their leader, Giovanni. But given that Giovanni's raid on Selfco happens before much of the rest of the Pokemon timeline, how did Giovanni know when and where to seek out these team leaders? And also, how did he get access to ultra wormholes and jumping between dimensions? Well, I believe this also came from Selfco. See, the Selfco building is littered with warp panels, panels that spin you around and teleport you across buildings. It's possible this technology was made by studying Abra, a Pokemon pretty important to Saffron City. I've done a video all about that. 
But for now, what I want to focus on is this. In the Delta episode of Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, the Devon Corporation are working at the Moss Deep Space Center to create a warp hole, through which they're going to send a meteorite to a different version of reality. This isn't an ultra wormhole necessarily, but it is a portal to another dimension, and it's fueled by the same technology as, they confirm themselves, the warp portals, the panels that make you spin around and travel everywhere. This technology also fueled by infinity energy. I believe that after his raid on Silphco, acquiring the Master Ball and acquiring Mewtwo, Giovanni returned to Silphco to get a better idea about this specific technology. And using this technology, before traveling the multiverse by way of ultra wormholes, instead traveled by the way of these warp holes, these warp panels, and he appeared in the headquarters of... Team Aqua and Magma, and Team Galactic, and the Plasma Frigate, and Team Flare, because all of their evil team bases have the warp panels. And actually, the Plasma Frigate is where Colrus gives you the Master Ball. So all of these evil team layers are linked by the warp panels and, of course, by the presence of Master Balls. It is this way that Giovanni found his candidates for Team Rainbow Rocket. And he brought with him, of course, his Mewtwo, which, by the way, can Mega Evolve. Mega Evolution happens as the result of a transformation of Pokemon using stones that came from an ancient time 3,000 years ago. But Mewtwo wasn't around 3,000 years ago. Giovanni made it in recent history. The answer to this might be found in Pokemon Origins, where Dr. Fuji, or the old man Fuji from Lavender Town, gives Red the Mega Stones for Charizard, the Mega Stone X. Charizard and Mewtwo are alike in that they both have access to two Mega Evolutions. I suspect that Mega Charizard X's Mega Evolution is not natural, just like Mewtwo's. It's not something that happened 3,000 years ago because Mewtwo didn't exist 3,000 years ago, but using their understanding of infinity energy and the life force of Pokemon, as learned through the information that they stole from the Devon Corporation and from Silphco, Team Rocket in the games were able to artificially create the Mewtwo Knight, which allows them to mega evolve Mewtwo. So this is how Giovanni assembled his team across the multiverse of madness, and once Rainbow Rocket was put together, they first attacked the Friend Plaza in the Alola region. This is a digital realm that acts as this game's horrible online feature that allows you to connect with other players, much like the Link Cable in the days of old, the same Link Cable that is the inspiration for the Link Cable in canon that connects these warp portals. So perhaps that's what they were doing here, setting up a Link Cable to the warp panels and warp portals that appear in the Aether Paradise. However, they could have gone somewhere else. For now, we have Area Zero, which also once again features that warp panel technology. We don't know why Team Rainbow Rocket didn't come here. I mean, obviously it's because the games didn't exist at that time, but perhaps it was something to do with the various paradoxes that would happen if they did. Giovanni is interested in taking over the multiverse as is, and if the stuff of wishes and dreams and time travel can happen in Area Zero, it could prove to be a weapon against Giovanni. For now, he was just taking on the regions that he knew he could take over one by one as he continues to amass his power. At the end of the game, he disappears Appears, though, having been defeated, swearing to defeat somewhere else, and he heads off to conquer some other region. Perhaps that region is Passio in Pokemon Masters, where we see characters from all across the Pokemon multiverse, including a different Archie and Maxi from their incarnations in Rainbow Rocket, teaming up. And actually, we even see Giovanni with Mewtwo with his Rainbow Rocket outfit. So maybe this is where he went after he was done in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. We just can't know for sure. Still, if a Paradox Mewtwo, like Iron Brains, one of the fake mon created uh, for this channel uh, a few months back, does show up somewhere in the future, then we'll know for a fact that Giovanni did swing by Area Zero in his creation of Rainbow Rocket. Of course, a final reason that he might not have come here is due to the Pokeball jamming signal that exists here, because there's no good in having a Master Ball if the thing won't open. We're facing off against the Protection Paradise post call. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is that a Master Ball in Professor Sada's hand? Sure enough, Sada and Churo both have access to Master Balls, and maybe this is just a coincidence here. Maybe it's because, of course, they were once the Pokemon Professors of the region before they went missing in Area Zero. Pokemon Professors are the other faction who give you Master Balls throughout the game, but Sada and Churo also fit the role in this game of the hidden secret big bad boss. And warp panels are in Area Zero. 
Is it possible that Giovanni did, in fact, swing by Area Zero when building Team Rainbow Rocket? You might be inclined to say no. After all, anyone who beats the Hall of Fame in the Paldea region gets given a Master Ball. Sada and Churro are among those. However, it's not just the one Master Ball. Sada and Churro have every single Pokemon they catch, every Pokemon that they've been catching, contained within Master Balls. As if they had the ability to create their own, as if they had the instructions for the Master Ball directly from Silphco. Is it possible that Giovanni really did come by Area Zero? I think so. Because I said at the beginning of the video that all of the evil team leaders from all of these various bases, Aqua, Magma, Galactic, the Plasma, Frigate, and of course Lysander Labs, where Master Balls are given to you, these all happen at different points in time across the Pokemon timeline. And yet he's able to pull all of these evil team leaders together in the same time period in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It's almost as if, after mastering the power of traveling the multiverse, he would have needed to come to Area Zero to access the Time Machine to pull together Team Rainbow Rocket. That Giovanni really does think of everything. Hello there, it's me, Professor Oak. This video is over, so please choose another one wisely and quickly. Bye bye. I owe the biggest debt of gratitude to those of you who've been supporting me over the years, including the big patrons of this month, New Orca, Michael Hornshoe, Lucas Gates, Jed Rubin, Charmander Ansible, and Anthony Lee. Thank you so much.